Sup nerds, I'm Cover Joey and I realised it has been so long since I covered r slash men writing women. It was actually the first video I ever uploaded to this channel was the first episode of that, but I did mess up the audio so be aware if you go and watch that episode. But for now, let's have a look at the creepiest and cringiest descriptions of women you ever saw. Her phone buzzed. OMG, just got a sneak peek of Vivian Westwood pre fall Mind blowing, Dahlia texted. Gels. Cool things going on with subverting traditional ideas of femininity, etc. I already said gels. Ah, uh, the best part about this interaction is that you know damn well that the writer, the writer would have thought that, like, this was so feminist of him <laughs> as well. Like, oh yeah, the Bechdel test has been freaking smashed. This is definitely, this is definitely how teenage girls talk. Gels. <laughs> it's like, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Wife of a Bears lineman wins a bronze medal today in Rio Olympics. Uh, you spelled three-time Olympian Corey Cogdell and Ryan wins second bronze medal today in Rio Olympics wrong. Yeah, like, this is, this is a shocking revelation to every single guy writing these kinds of articles. But women do exist as people outside of the men that they're related to, either through marriage or blood. It's freaking shocking, but it's true. It's like the whole Amal George Clooney when people talk about uh, Amal Clooney only existing as George Clooney's wife as opposed to, you know, a polyglot barrister with, you know, <laughs> high knowledge in international law and human rights. You know, like with the top <laughs> freaking clients for major worldwide things. Like, how, But she is always described as George Clooney's wife and it drives me freaking mental. It's like, can you imagine if George Clooney was only ever described as, you know, husband to internationally renowned barrister Amal Clooney has won this award in acting? <laughs> you know, it's essentially what it is. Well, this is a screenshot from 4chan, so you know that you're going to get the absolute height of political discourse when discussing misogyny. They used the phrase, tit cow, I had no idea what that meant, I had to google it, I thought that it meant like those anime cow girls that you get. Turns out it's just a gross term for someone with massive tits, so yeah. What's your reason for wanting a tit cow girlfriend? Really big moves make a girl look even more round and soft, it just feels cute and cuddly and they seem fun to play with in all sorts of ways. Also, somehow I find it really charming and arousing, the idea of a shy, humble, principal girl being overwhelmed by these huge burdens on her chest that she always has to be aware of and deal with the practical concerns of in her daily life that have no real purpose in being big except to serve as these ever-present targets of sexual arousal. I would kind of want to tease her a little, but mostly just make her feel okay about her body and come up with new ways to play with her boobs together and experience all the daily life struggles she has regarding her chest with her. I don't know why I like that idea so much, just, well, you just could enjoy that idea as much as you want because it's gonna stay as a freaking idea. I mean, you want somebody that struggles due to something that you find sexy? But that, that's just a really weird thing to wish on someone to, and also like, targets, as these ever-present targets of sexual arousal, so like, you want her to be a harassed? That's your thing. You want somebody that's self-conscious and harassed easily because that's really, really freaking manipulative to want that for something, you know, as a partner. You know, somebody that's freaking codependent on you or whatever. And, uh, and the whole, the shy, humble, principal girl, but overwhelmed. That's like a freaking anime trope, right? Isn't that like the, uh, is it Miyuki from Lucky Star? You know, the, the pink one? And then, uh, Yuki, or Yuri, Yuri from, um, Doki Doki Literature Club, which, by the way, is really good. But, you know, the whole, <laughs> you know, it's like that whole, Ooh, Miyuki-san, your tits are so nice. Touchy, 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 then, eh, what are you doing? You're embarrassing me. And then, like, the girl with, like, small tits, like, blushing in the corner, like, oh, I'll never have tits like Yuki-san. Like... That's what this is. this. This is just a guy that's watched way too much anime and has these weird ideas about tits based on that. I mean, if Anthony's saying, I want a tit cow girlfriend, you know, if somebody's like really embarrassed and shy about their tits as you want them to be, then calling them a tit cow isn't going to be, you know, it's not going to do any good. I don't want my girl to feel remotely confident or secure in her looks. God's sake. 
Oh, this this next one is just pretty much one of the worst sex scenes I've had to <laughs> read in my head, and now I'm gonna read it aloud. I feel, she said, like I'm going to come in my pants. It came to him too then, just like that. There was no wrong about it, no right, it just was. Let's see if you are, he said, and moved forwards with that same grace and that weird speed you would never suspect if you saw him ambling down Main Street. Let's just see about that! He set the glass on the counter with his left hand and slipped his right between her legs before she knew what was happening. Alan, what are you do? And then, as his thumb pressed with gentle force against her clitoris, doing turned into doing, and he lifted her with his easy, amazing strength. She put her arms around his neck, being careful even at this warm moment to hold with her forearms. Her arms struck off behind him like stiff bundles of sticks. But they were suddenly the only parts of her which were stiff. The rest of her seemed to be melting. Alan put me down. I don't think so, he said and lifted her higher. He slid his free hand between her shoulder blades as she started to slip and pressed her forwards, and suddenly she was rocking back and forth on the hand between her legs like a girl on a hobby horse. And he was helping her rock, and she felt as if she were in some sort of wonderful swing with her feet in the wind and her hair in the stars. Alan, hold tight, pretty lady, he said, and he was laughing as if she weighed no more than a bag of feathers. Oh, Alan. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, I'm just going to straight up address the elephant in the room here. This is assault. Like, she actually says, Alan put me down. He says, I don't think so. Continues. She actually says his name again in a way that makes it sound like, look, you, you shouldn't be doing this. Whether or not she's physically enjoying what's happening to her doesn't really change the fact that she said no. You know, she tells you what she wants, not her body, and she said, put me down, which, and he said, I don't think so, which, yeah, I, and I had a little look because, you know, I mean, this is Stephen King, as you're probably unsurprised to hear, and it's not like Alan is some kind of problematic protagonist that views women badly and that's his flaw, which, you know, if that were the case, then you would be able to take this with a pinch of salt, but... <sighs> Nah, nah, he's just a normal guy. He's just a normal guy, and that's what normal guys do, apparently. Which, no, no, we freaking don't. Also, like, the whole, he... Right, so, in this scene, he puts his hands between her legs, puts his thumb up against the, um... Uh, the, the love button, I'll say, and lifts her up by it. I mean, what kind of freaking strongman thing is that? And how powerful is her clit? I mean, if she could just power and balance herself on top of it, then that is freaking impressive. That's more impressive than what he's doing with his thumb. <laughs> you know, I just, it's just, this isn't, this isn't how, I just, he has kids. Stephen King has kids. He's made, he has known a woman biblically. How is he still writing this stuff? Must be the women, he laughed. Yeah, Felipe said if you stick a candle in a Mexican woman, it comes out melted. Stick a candle in a Cuban woman and it comes out lit. Glad to hear they were bonding. I asked, any mechanical issues? No, no, no. Oh gosh, you don't, that's not a good thing to bond over. You don't bond over both racism and misogyny at the same time. Hey, don't worry, I made great mates with Felipe. We spoke, <laughs> you know, we enjoyed all of these racist stereotypes and comments and weird things about sticking candles up vaginas. I mean, what the hell? It's, just <laughs> it's not a good thing to bond over at all. Fantasy for her. This one, this one is just so freaking bad. This one clearly has a freaking male writer for something that's designed for women and it's just so freaking obvious and I'm going to hate myself as I read this, but hey, the things I do for this channel. Fantasy for her! 
four powerful motors. She always craved oral sex play and wished she could enjoy it more often. Now she could. Her ultimate pleasure would be the first to give her the intimate ecstasy she was looking for. First, she pressed the button to activate the vibration and then traced her body with a pulsating pinpoint pleasure. She knew this was going to feel so good deep inside her later, but she first wanted to explore the oral sensations. She placed the oval cone of her ultimate pleasure over her yearning mound. It perfectly cupped her labia, clitoris, and most sensitive lady bits. The pulsating, milking suction was perfectly timed to entice her soft skin, making her tender with sensation. It felt so incredible as if her very essence was being seduced. She pressed another button with the motorized tongue, began lapping her swollen clit. With each press, the smooth tongue sensually teased her sensitive sweet spot. She was enthralled with the incredible pleasure as she explored all the various tongue patterns. This was the most amazing sensation combination she'd ever felt, and then, like a dream, her climb Max embraced her with breathless trembles. Her ultimate pressure made her sexual fantasy come true. Yeah, so you can see how this was. Yeah. This was written like some kind of male fantasy, right? This is like how a guy wants to see a woman wank rather than how the wank actually <laughs> takes place. I can't believe I'm talking about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that all you really need to sell this, rather than this long flowery prose that's kind of gross, all you need to do is say this, number one, it's got this many settings, number two, it's quiet or not quiet, whatever, number three, you know, battery or plug powered, boom, there you go, sorted, that's all you need to know, we don't need to know all this crap, especially as, you know, it's gonna put people off. So I had to read the context for this one first because it makes it 10 times worse. The weirdest possible place to comment on the attractiveness of female Marxist guerrilla fighters. Below is an excerpt from an article by the British author Tom Holland, uh, not the Spider-Man one, published in The Spectator on the 12th of August 2017 about Daesh's brutal genocide against the Yazidis. In the article, he talks about how Yazidi men are being killed, women and girls are being sold into sexual slavery, and boys are being kidnapped and indoctrinated to become Daesh militants. Which only makes his comment on the attractiveness of female Kurdish Marxist guerrilla fighters seem even more out of place. A great hulk of concrete marked where Saddam had stationed one of his Scud missile launchers in the First Gulf War. Next to it, in tents massed around an ancient temple, was a camp of female and distractingly attractive Marxist guerrillas. That's right, these are people fighting for the, so that they will not get sold into sex slavery and you're distracted by, ooh, oh my goodness, they're so attractive. That's like the creepiest thing in the world. This is exactly the sort of creepy crap that Daesh are doing themselves. I mean, you know, not exactly the same, but, you know, it's the same line of thinking. The whole, oh, they're women, so we must immediately think about how sexy they are and how that, you know, relates to me. I mean, even even if he did find them unbelievably attractive, let's say he looked and he saw his dream women, you know, completely gorgeous. That doesn't mean that it was acceptable to write it in the article. He could have said, like, he could have just said... Um, yeah. Intense mass around the ancient temple was a camp of female Marxist guerrillas. Boom. That explains everything that you need to know about this situation without adding in your creepy boner about people who are, you know, in dire straits for frick's sake. It wasn't the most important aspect. Her beauty was. It was an all-American beauty. The sort of beauty that could only be found in American girls with the blonde hair and the breasts that only American girls have, that beautifully proportioned body, thin but not anorexic, her skin, wasp, oh, creamy and delicately pure in total contrast to her expressions, which always seemed slightly dirty as if she was a bad girl, and this excited me even more. Oh, we got that beautiful mix of misogyny and racism here, you know, because the most attractive girl is white, <laughs> you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Yikes to the nth degree on that one, and the whole thin but not anorexic, perfectly proportioned, and like only American. Girl. Like this is this is some incel crap, you know. This is proper you know, oh, this is a Stacy kind of character. It's that kind of caricature of what a, a woman is as opposed to 
any kind of person <laughs> you know like it's just like this is this is how you exist to be attractive and you don't exist in any way other than this <laughs> that's basically what it is and it's so creepy okay so this next one seems like the kind of sex scene that would be written by a guy that exclusively jerks off to hentai Shivani wanted to talk to him, and the man was willing to. She wasn't less gorgeous. She had a charming, pretty face, white complexion, amazingly tight, well-toned butt, Goldilocks lips, small but sharp-angled nose, and a huge, never-to-take-eyes-off rounded breasts. She got up, taking the window side, and signaled the young man to sit next to her. Her gaze was inviting. Young Sanjeev was flabbergasted seeing her in a semi-nude body-hugging blue stretch one-piece bikini. <laughs> Sorry, it just took me back. I don't think this guy knows what a bikini is. <laughs> okay. Her bust sweats too? I'm sorry, I need to take a break. This is taking- this is just killing me. Okay, okay, okay. I'm good. I can do this. I can do this! Right. Her busts were too big to be contained inside. Luckily for them, nobody actually came to the pool on a regular working day. Only on weekends, pool remained completely occupied. Sanjeev held her hand and dragged her in the warm, soothing water. He lifted her in his arms, holding her tenderly, caressing her white silver body. Shivani was melting with passionate love, feeling all... <laughs> Wait, what? Sorry, I need to read that again. Shivani was melting with passionate love, feeling of his hand all over her. They both were looking into each other's eyes. Their lips touched and tongues found their way into their mouths to stroke and roll deep inside. Soon Sanjeev's hand began to work on her large bosoms and on the plump like reddish tits inside from the side of the armhole! <laughs> armhole! What the f- Did you mean I just- <laughs> What is this, the secret extra hole? You know, you got the mouth, the, the vajingo, the bum, and now the armhole as well. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay, I need a drink. Okay, no, I can, I can push through. I can push through this way. Their bodies pressed hard together. Both were beyond control and separated only when Shivani pushed him away from her and huffed for some air, hiding her face in both her palms. What? Sanjeev asked. You worked like a professional on me, idiot. You ended me up dirtying my linen. She smiled in a druggy sort of way still finding difficulty recovering back from her passionate encounter. Let's go. We have to have dinner as well and get up early tomorrow morning. She watched her steps as she turned around to climb the stairs of the pool, rolling her hips as if she was on the runway. Sanjeev had to close his eyes and breathe loudly to eliminate the huge erection. It took all his skill to manipulate his back. <laughs> Okay. Oh no, I should have read this through before <laughs> okay. Sanjeev had to close his eyes and breathe loudly to eliminate the huge erection. It took all his skill to manipulate his phallus to avoid showing his bulge. <laughs> I mean, is that a thing if you've got a heart on and you don't and you want it to go down? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's going to be really, you know, um, <laughs> soothing for a girl. If you've just had like an intimate encounter and you've got an erection and you don't want to have one. If you just stuck, if you just close your eyes and go, <gasps> <gasps> that's really just going to, you know, settle her because <laughs> Freaking phallus bending is manipulating his my oh gosh. There's just so much wrong with this. I don't think any freaking commentary I can do would improve on what we've already been given. I mean, the guy doesn't know what a bikini is. There's an armhole for some freaking reason. Uh, and, and all the freaking gross ex descriptions like tongues found their way to their mouths and stroke and roll deep inside and soon they would battle and the loser tongue would be sent to defeat, you know. And then like smiling in a druggy way. Uh, I mean, I know that part of this must be due to like an ang uh, a language barrier, 
that it's just like, especially with the whole her busts were too big to be contained inside, but somehow she was still decent in this bikini that she's going around in. It's so, it's so hentai in its, you know, description. It's just, I just, I just, I've lost all will to just do anything right now. Well, that's it for this episode of R slash Men Writing Women. Honestly, I feel like after reading that, I need the longest bath in the world and I'll still never be clean. As I say at the end of every episode, if you enjoyed hearing from this subreddit or would like to hear from any other subreddit, then do let me know in the comments. And until then, I'll see you all next time.